right. So welcome to a practice for the shoulders. We're gonna start this practice lying on our backs. And as you come to your back, take a few breaths. And do a short little body scan. Let your attention wander from your feet all the way up to your head. Just checking in, see what's here this morning in this body. <clears throat> in a practice for the shoulders, I will start this with just a few questions. First of all, what do you notice as you bring your attention to your shoulders? Do you feel the backs of your shoulders on the earth? Are you aware of the front of your shoulders or the sides? Is there any pain in your shoulders? I'm thinking metaphorically, how much weight is on your shoulders? What do you carry here? If your shoulders could speak, what would they say? Our shoulders are an extension of our heart chakra. This place in us that is designed for connection, love, compassion, nurturing. So see what's there to be observed at the beginning of this practice. I invite you to use this time as an act of kindness to your body. Kindness in the choices you make about how you move and when you lean in and push a little and when you lean back and hold yourself out of a posture. Self-care, an act of kindness. So let's go ahead and place the feet on the floor by our hips, arms resting at our sides. And we'll begin moving into a flowing bridge. Using the strength in the back of our body to lift us up against gravity. Making this a posture of strength for the back. And at the same time, flexibility opening for the front of the body. With our shoulders in extension, what do you notice when your hips are up? What do you notice when your hips are down through the shoulders? The next time your hips come to the floor, reach your arms forward, shoulder flexion, and let them come as far over your head as you comfortably can. Maybe they'll touch the ground, maybe not quite. And then let the hands come back to the floor. Let's do that action a few times, shoulder flexion. And then lowering the arms. The next time the arms come down, lift the hips up, like you're pushing the air down in order to get a little higher, maybe even pushing onto the earth with your arms. And as your hips lower, let the arms float up and back. Start to match this movement with your breath. Inhale as the body lifts. Exhale as the body lowers. We'll do that one more time.
And with the hips resting on the earth, let the arms come out like snow angels and just notice that range of motion, abduction and adduction. And since there's gravity weighing down on your arms, just notice any points of tension or resistance as you move through this range of motion. And then gently drawing the knees into the chest, give yourself a hug, let your back move on the earth. If you're doing this practice early in the morning, your back might need a little adjustment, reset. If it's afternoon, this is just a good little way to say hello to your back. Let's keep our knees where they are, shins parallel to the floor, squeezing the knees together. We're gonna to open our arms out to the sides. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, pull your navel to your spine. Let the knees go toward the left, not touching down, and then come back to center. Knees toward the right. The shoulders now acting as stabilizers on the earth. The core muscles, the obliques, creating this action of side to side motion. This can be a small movement or a large movement. The way you know is if you reach a point where you can't breathe, you're holding your breath, make the movement smaller. Coming back to center, squeezing the knees together. Let's touch the fingers behind the head. Inhale, lifting in a just small little yogi crunch. And then let your head come back down. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, move towards your legs. Inhale, lower. Exhale. Inhale, we'll do one more. Yogi crunch. And release fingertips to the knees again. Give yourself a hug. Let's roll over to one side. And we will bring ourselves up to a kneeling side plank. So let's start with the left knee beneath us and the right leg out. And our weight is on our left hand. So you can make a fist there or a flat hand there. Your right arm is just resting on your thigh. Let's bring that arm toward the ceiling and then flip the palm to allow the arm to come the rest of the way over the head. Come to the ceiling, flip the palm down and lower the arm. So moving in this direction, abduction. We wanna make sure the palm is always up so that we're not um, impinging a muscle in the shoulder called the supraspinatus. Whenever we reach our arms overhead, we wanna rotate the palm up. Just noticing how that feels to the shoulder. You might try it one time with the palm down and you'll feel that you get a little restriction. So turning the palm gives you a, like an open gate. And speaking of gait, let's push ourselves up all the way up over into Parigasana. And we'll go back and forth a few times using our obliques. Palm turns as we exhale over. We inhale to lift. Paying attention to shoulders as we use our core. Nice, one more deep breath in, reaching up. And then we'll windmill the hands to the earth coming into tabletop and let's just switch sides. So the left foot comes off the side of the mat, the right leg extends, kneeling side plank. Turn the palm over the head to allow that little gate to open and then turn the palm down toward the leg. Palm up. Calm down. The 
It's next time we'll begin our gate flow. Parigasana, opening the gate. As you're moving with your breath, what are you opening today? Remember that the root of Parigasana is a parigraha, the letting go of attachments. It's opening ourselves to this practice, to something new. Take one more deep breath in. And on the exhale, windmill the hands to the earth. Let's come to all fours. We're going to activate an important muscle in the shoulder girdle. It's called the serratus anterior. It's right here on the side of the body. It's the muscle that creates those little jagged lines when you see somebody doing pull-ups. So to activate serratus, press your hands into the ground and protract or open your shoulder blades. Just feel those muscles kind of hugging around the rib cage coming forward. Those muscles are supporting your shoulder joint. We're gonna do a little thing called shoulder push-ups. So come to neutral. You might even sink down just a little bit and then press again, open up through the shoulder blades, scapular protraction, scapular retraction. See if you can make this movement a little smaller coming from neutral to protraction and, and getting rid of that retraction, which can cause winged scapula or the shoulder blades kind of poking out on the back. So really small shoulder push-ups. And when you find that, find your core stability and let's move into spinal balance. One arm reaches forward, one leg reaches back. If you can feel what your shoulder joints are doing here. One is weighted and stable. One is open and reaching. And then switch. Opposite arm forward, leg back, spinal balance. Let's do each side one more time. Trying to stay between neutral and shoulder blades open or protracted. Avoiding that winged scapula. Coming forward into plank, kneeling plank pose. So here again, pressing into the earth, opening the scapula. We wanna find shoulder stability here. So as we spin the crease of the elbows forward, let's shift the body forward, lowering halfway down. Can you protract or open your shoulder blades here? And then melting the body to the earth, lifting up into spine extension, cobra. Feeling strength in the back. And as we exhale, we'll press back into downward facing dog. Looking forward, let the feet come to the hands. Press to shins, inhale, half lift. And exhale, forward fold. Rising up through that flat back, extended mountain, turning the palms up. And hands come to heart center. Let's continue that circle sweep with the arms, palms up and hands to heart. And we're gonna add a little balance to that just to make it interesting. So as you circle sweep up, lift one knee and exhale, come back to two feet. Circle sweep, lift the opposite knee and come back, moving with breath, feeling shoulders, finding balance and finding imbalance. Just do that one more time on each side. Beautiful, everybody pausing with hands at heart center. Facing the front of our mats. 
either shifting our eyes down or closing our eyes softly. Let's pause right here at the beginning of two rounds of sun salutation. Notice shoulders. As we move through these two series A sun salutations, notice shoulders and hips, the largest joints, ball and socket joints. Let's pay attention there. Inhale, circle, sweep the arms up, palms lift. Exhale, swan dive, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Pressing hands to shins, half lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose, knees or toes. Find that scapular protraction as you lower halfway down. And then lifting into spine and hip extension. Deep breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. A deep breath in and as you exhale, raise your sitting bones higher up away from your hands. Let out a big exhale. Looking forward, step the feet to the hands. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, forward fold. Rising high, extended mountain, palms up. And hands to heart. Take one more round of Sun A. And before you do, just check in. Do you need more energy or more calm. If you need more energy, I invite you to move a little more briskly, a little more vigor and breath. If you need more calm, move slowly and choose child's pose at the end. Let's begin. One round of Sun A. At any time, you can change your energy by the way you move and the way you breathe. More or less, your choice. We'll meet in either down dog or child's pose. Let's take three breaths here, giving your body what you need. Stepping feet to hands, lift halfway. With a big sigh, exhale and fold. Soft knees, inhale, circle, sweep arms up. And exhale, hands to heart. All right, we're gonna move into lunge. So we'll keep our right foot where it is. Let's play with balance as we pick up our left knee and reach that left leg back as far as we can. And then we'll just set the toes on the ground. You could scooch the toes back, finding your lunge. Hands can stay on the hips right here. We're working toward a twisting lunge. So let's all bring our hands to heart center and Shift forward from the hips. So let the action be forward, forward, forward until the point where you feel like you're gonna stay here. Then we'll initiate the twist. You can choose hands or elbows. And a twisting pose is a ringing out. Right? There's a little bit of a, a tourniquet effect where we're really trying to hold and squeeze in an area so that when we stop the squeezing, fresh oxygen comes into that place. See if you can feel that in your body. Deep breath in, big exhale. Unwind, hands to heart. Step the left foot to meet the right. Pause on solid ground, two feet. And when you're ready, right knee comes up. Slowly extend that leg back, working with balance. Drop the toe, scooch until you find your lunge. Awesome, and then hands to heart. Elongation 
before rotation. Grow before you go. So how long can you make your spine before you start your twist? And then find that ringing out in your torso, your abdomen, your organs being squeezed, cleansed. Deep breaths. On the next exhale, return to center. Step the back foot to meet the front foot. We're gonna take some deeper breaths with circle sweep. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. One more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, <clears throat> inhale, forward fold. Nod your head yes, shake your head no. And we'll keep the right foot where it is, stepping the left foot back, turning out and rising into warrior one. Let's hold our feet firm in warrior one as we open the arms out into a T, palms up, thumbs reaching back, chest expansion in warrior one. On the exhale, hinging forward, fingertips, coming together. Inhale to open. Exhale to touch. Our arms are moving in horizontal abduction. Coming out and open. Reach the left arm up and drop the right arm down. We're going to move our arms toward cow's face pose. So the right arm is going to come up from below and the left arm reaches down. Our fingers reaching toward each other. You could take a hold of your shirt if they're not quite touching or maybe a strap. I'm playing here with cow's face arms in warrior one. We have one shoulder in internal rotation, the bottom arm, and the top arm in external rotation. Taking deep breaths, just feeling shoulders. And slowly unwind the arms, open into warrior two a little wider stance. The opposite now, eagle arms. Let's take the right arm underneath the left and wind. So arms could stay here or in a V or work towards a wrap of some kind. Let's move our torso sideways. So lateral flexion toward the back leg and toward the front leg. Noticing the effects of gravity on our shoulders. The next time you come to reverse warrior, unwind and float the arms up. Nice. Exhale, side angle, leave the back arm in a half bind. Feel that shoulder open here. Take a couple of breaths. Inhale one more time, reverse your warrior. And windmill your hands to the earth, downward facing dog. You have the option to stay here <clears throat> or flow through a vinyasa. If you're choosing vinyasa, Keep those shoulders nice and broad. And we'll return to downward facing dog. When you're ready, the left foot makes its way to the top of the mat. Dropping the back heel will come up into warrior one. 
and then opening the arms, palms up, thumbs back, moving into this chest expansion with an inhale and hinging from the hips as we reach the fingers forward. All of the practices of yoga remind us that we're here to learn how to be better breathers. And these shapes, these postures are just inviting us to bring deeper breath into all the parts of our bodies. In doing so, the yogis promise a better quality of life, a connection of mind and body, spirit, our whole being connected. Next time the arms open, let's find that cow's face pose. <clears throat> right arm comes up, left arm lowers down. And then the left arm bends behind and the fingers reach toward each other. They may touch, maybe not. We're just noticing sensation as one arm is internally rotated and one is externally rotated. Deep breaths. And softly opening out into warrior two. In warrior two, taking eagle arms, left arm below, right arm up. And finding your expression of eagle arms adding movement, lateral flexion of the spine. Noticing the effects of gravity on your shoulders. Release the arms, inhale to reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle with a half bind. Let the arms stay behind the back. Gently pulling the shoulder open. Space for breath. Beautiful, unwind, super slow motion to a reverse warrior. And then windmill the hands to the earth. Downward facing dog. <clears throat> On your next inhale, step your right foot forward once again. Drop the back heel. One breath, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Take a nice deep stance here. Inhale, side angle. We're going to be here for a bit. So some options, this is where you might want to pull a strap in if you would like to explore a bind. Option one is to stay right here. Option two, reach the fingers toward the floor or a block. That's a really nice option because we can press the arm into the inside of the leg and give ourselves a nice open sensation. Third option, Fingertips over the ear. Extended side angle. Fourth option, you could wrap your arm behind your back. And this is where you might play with the idea of binding the pose, finding your hands behind your back, keeping the shoulders open and stacked. Great place for a strap. And wherever you have your hands, keep them there and slowly straighten the right leg into a variation of triangle with whatever arm you chose. It all works. Deep breath. And we'll slowly bend that knee again, release the hands to the mat. Come into plank pose, and you're going to feel different in both of your shoulders. 
might feel like one arm is longer or stronger. You can stay here or take a vinyasa. And when you're ready, let's step the left foot forward, coming up with one breath in warrior one and opening out to warrior two. Turn to face you. Into side angle. So options again, you can stay up or work your body a little bit lower. Top arm can be up or over or in a half bind or a full bind. Give yourself time here and opportunity to explore your choices. We're here to put our body in a shape that allows us to deliver breath more effectively. And in doing that, we quiet the mind. Is that happening? Or is yoga an opportunity to push yourself and perform to achieve something? Just observe. When you're ready, straighten the leg, keep keeping your arms wherever you found a great place for them. Deep breaths in triangle pose. Your expression. And when you're ready, let's soften the knee. We'll walk into a wide straddle. Taking the feet wider, the toes to the edges of the mat, lowering the head down. We'll walk our hands out in front of us the way we would in downward facing dog. Give yourself a permission here to exhale. I to invite you to try a push up here. So the feet are wide. We're gonna walk ourselves forward into a very wide plank pose. So hands come under the shoulders, feet wide, shifting our bodies forward as we bend the elbows. You might find that chaturanga is a little bit easier when the feet are wide. It's okay to keep your hips up in the air. It's just a really fun way to practice chaturanga with wide shoulder blades. One more time and we'll press back again to that wide straddle. Allow your chest to fall a tiny bit more. Walking the hands in toward the feet. Let's lift to a flat back. And we'll pivot our body toward the top of the mat, dropping the knee, and let's come into all fours. Tucking the toes, lifting into downward facing dog. We're gonna take our feet wide about the width of our yoga mat. Let's take a second to just visit our hamstrings. The hands come back about a hand length. Shifting the sitting bones a little higher, softening the knees. See if you can feel a stretch right in the middle of your hamstring, straight up and down. The semi tendinosis. Lift up on your toes, push the heels out, press back again. And now you're finding the outer hamstrings, the biceps femoris. Coming up again, we'll turn our toes out, heels in. And as we soften the knees and press, you might feel inner hamstring, semi-membranosis. And then we'll walk our hands back toward our feet. Fingertips on the mat, let's bend and straighten our knees. We're just gonna do this a few times just to lubricate the joints. And this is where you get to decide the depth of this posture for you. So Malasana is a deep prayer squat, but you could choose to come here with elbows on the thighs. I refer to this as the camping pose. So 
If you don't get that, it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if you are getting a green light, you can go ahead and let your hips come down, knees in between your elbows for malasana. And if you're choosing that, it's helpful to have the feet wider. Um, that, that helps you get more on flat feet. Elbows press out, knees squeeze in, and we're lifting through the spine like a turtle coming out of its shell, reaching up through the crown of the head as the tailbone reaches down. This can give some relief in the lower back. It can be helpful with sciatica in moderation. It's a gentle relief to the sacrum, the SI joint. Invitation to fly today. If you'd like to try crow pose, this is a wonderful entry point. So you can stay here and just feel and stretch or place your hands on the mat, come up onto your toes, park your legs on the backs of the arms. It's really helpful to look forward, to squeeze them, to um, bring the toes toward each other, engage Mula Bandha. Open up your shoulder blades and release. And you're all in this together, everyone expressing ourselves in the way we can in this moment. We're all here together. Let the fingertips come to the floor, slowly extend the legs and then heel toe the feet together. Pressing into a half lift and reaching the arms slowly up overhead. Hands to heart. Pause for just a moment to reflect. That last series, that last sequence. Just reflect on what came up for you. Moving into two balancing postures. So we'll start with dancer because this is a really big shoulder posture. Placing our weight in our left foot, reach the right toes behind you. And as you do, let your right hand come out to your side. So from the side, it's gonna look like this, palm up, external rotation of the shoulder. One option for a dancer is just to stay like this and lift the arm and just work at lifting that back leg. Okay. You could bend the knee and work on balance there. If your shoulder allows, you're going to come down and find the inside of that back ankle, setting the eyes at a point in front of you. And then if you have that hold, go ahead and kick your foot into your hand and let your body reach forward into dancer. You can root down into your standing leg, kick into your foot and reach with your front hand equally. It's gonna help with balance. Release and pause. Press down into the right foot with a tall spine, left toes behind you. Turn the left palm up and reach your right arm to the ceiling. It's a wonderful place to stay and explore balance. If you'd like, you can reach toward your back ankle or take a hold. And then just explore the journey of being more upright or more forward leaning, kicking the foot into the hand. Just observing the experience. Release, come to mountain pose. Let your hands come in front of your heart. Take a few breaths. A transition. Hmm. 
Standing again on the left foot, draw the right knee up in front. And holding the knee with the left hand, slowly and move in slow motion, open your right arm behind you. Let your eyes travel even more slowly from point to point as you eventually look toward your back hand. Standing spinal twist. And slowly release. And as we do the other side, I'd like to show you an option for that pose using a wall. So if you do have the luxury of a wall, you're just gonna scoot over to a wall and you're gonna stand sideways with your left shoulder at the wall. We'll pick up, pick up the left knee, hold the left knee with the right hand, and then just reach your left arm behind you on the wall, looking back at your hand. So that should feel a lot like when you're laying on the ground in a spinal twist, but you just have a different relationship with gravity. Deepen your breath. Find your foundation. Lengthen your spine. And slowly return to two feet, solid ground, hands in front of your heart. This is our last moment of standing. Take one more chance to just notice, observe. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms up. Exhale, swan dive, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Press to half lift and exhale, downward facing dog. Shifting forward onto our knees, let's slowly lower through Chaturanga all the way down onto our bellies. And we'll prepare for camel, sorry, locust. Camel's next. Arms come down to your sides. As we begin spine extension, lift first your face off the mat, then let the shoulders lift. And then we'll externally rotate, turning the palms down, feeling the scapula retract on the back. Pause here to feel the strength in the back. You can stay here or float your feet, coming into hip extension. Reach out long through your toes, hug your shoulders onto your back, breathe. Take another deep breath in. Exhale, lower one cheek toward the mat and wiggle out your hips. For the next posture, if you have a block or a firm pillow nearby, take a hold, find that. And we're gonna bring it down and place it between our legs. So I like to use the middle side of the block for this. You can use the smaller side too. That makes it a little more challenging. And we're just gonna hug in on that block with the inner thighs, just above the knees. Okay, so locust is the first option. So we'll raise up again and you can just squeeze the block in locust. If you are interested in moving towards bow, bend your knees, flex the feet, and reach the hands toward the ankles. Deep breath in. Exhale, release. Opposite cheek to the mat. Noticing. Observing. And 
Let's bring our hands to our shoulders and press up onto our knees. Coming into camel. So you can keep the block if you like. It's the exact same posture we just did, just with a different relationship to gravity. So tucking our toes, let's start by bringing hands to the glutes, pressing down on the glutes. Scapular retraction, pull the shoulder blades together. Spine extension, lifting the spine up and out of the pelvis. Hip extension, hips pressing forward. And either staying here or reaching the fingertips toward the heels. Trying to get to the heels with two hands at the same time. Breathe. Observe. Shoulders in extension. Spine in extension. Hips in extension. Let's return to neutral. Pausing here, we can stay upright or place our hips back on a block or our heels. Let's bring both of our hands over our heart and let's close back in. Camel is a big posture. It's an exciting posture, meaning it's stimulation to the nervous system. As you exhale here, tuck your chin and pause to de-escalate the nervous system. Notice yourself slowing down, systems slowing, heart, breath, mind. From here, we'll move into child's pose. Use the block under your forehead. Use your hands stacked like fists. Take a deep breath in with a long exhale. When you feel ready, release and come around to a seat, bringing the soles of the feet together in butterfly. I'm gonna do a little fun flow here, a little vinyasa that um, will keep our core temperature up as we move into a couple of deeper stretches. So we're gonna take a deep breath in here in butterfly and then just exhale gently round the spine coming down into flexion. On the inhale, the knees come together, the arms float, the feet lift into boat. And then we'll exhale lower. As you start to move with your breath, explore the options. This can be a really small movement, it can be really big. Move with your breath. Exaggerate the breath, an ujjayi breath that builds heat. And we will end in butterfly. You can either sit with an upright spine or gently fold over your legs. Finding an upright spine, moving into Gomu Kasana, cow's face pose. 
So let's take our left heel a little closer to the body. And if that doesn't work for your knee, the left leg can stay out straight. The right leg will cross over. So this could be a wonderful place to stay just with the leg crossed and the bottom leg straight if the bottom leg says, uh-uh, not today. You can also sit on a block. And I personally like this option of giving my foot a little bit of height there um, when my hips feel kind of tight. So crossing the right leg over the left in some way, reach the left arm up and give yourself a pat on the back. And come over and take a hold of that elbow and gently assist the elbow in if you like. And then the right arm comes down and up from below. There's another nice place to use a strap. And go move Hasana. If you press your head into your forearm, you'll get a little bit more tricep sensation. Breathe deeply. Swami Satchidananda said, mastering this pose is crucial for liberation. I'm not sure why he said that, but I think it's because it's complicated and challenging, uncomfortable, and we can stay here longer and experience all of those things. To release this pose, just let the right arm come down to the floor behind you and the left arm lift up to the sky. See if you can feel those lines of energy and then start to rotate through the torso into a twist. Lengthening through the crown, twisting to look over the back shoulder. You might close your eyes or look down and just check in again. What are you noticing in your body? Is this practice an act of kindness to your body? Let's return to center, picking up this top leg shaking the legs out in front of us and we'll switch sides. You might find a different experience on the second side, the knees are different. So the right heel can come in or stay extended. Left leg crosses over. Sitting on a block or giving your foot something to rest on. Take a moment to find Gomukhasana legs. Let's do the arms a little differently on this side. I'd like you to start with the bottom arm. So we're gonna drop the left, bring the left arm behind us. And if you can see where my hand is over there, I'm gonna hold my own hand. I'm gonna reach back and hold my own hand, kind of tugging the hand outward a bit. So just get that elbow nice and close to you. Take your right arm onto the left shoulder and kind of glide it down and then slide the back of your left hand up between your shoulder blades. And see if that gives you a little bit more room. Right arm circle sweeps up and pat yourself on the back. You can use your head to gently press back into that forearm. Cow's face, Gomukhasana. Deepen the breath. See if we can stay here long enough to achieve liberation. The next inhale, sit tall, release the left hand behind you, reach the right arm up and rotate from the torso into your twist.
And let's release. Coming back to center. Lowering down onto our backs. And here on your back, you can draw your knees to chest. You can take happy baby. Do something that feels a little bit like a reset for your spine as we move into another back bending posture. So I'm gonna offer either bridge or wheel for this next piece. And we'll be here for several breaths. So I'm gonna give you some options. Option one, the easiest and most restorative is to just lift your hips onto a block or a bolster and be here with your scapula down your back, arms on the floor, eyes closed, just breathing. Option two, a more active bridge using the strength in the back of your body, which might invite you to interlace the hands underneath. If wheel pose is in your wheelhouse, your practice, you could turn the palms right by your ears and press up to the crown of your head and then lift up into bridge. And you are also welcome to go to a wall and walk your hands down the wall behind you, which is another way to come into wheel pose. So find your back bending posture, your spine extension, the pose that invites breath to travel freely through your body. you are in wheel, come back to bridge. Find something to place under your hips, even if it's just your hand, and then raise your legs in the air. Come into legs up the wall, the oldest known yoga pose. The reverse of circulation, reverse of energy. Allowing our heart to receive our brain to be a little more clear. You are welcome to lift from here up into shoulder stand. If you make that choice, please keep your eyes forward on your feet. Try not to turn your head side to side when you have a lot of weight on the back of your neck. It's really hard when there's a screen to resist looking at the screen, but you're gonna do that. Keep your hips down, look at the screen first. Deep breath in, long exhale. And then softening the knees, lowering the feet to the earth. If you have a block underneath your hips, take it out. And we're gonna move the block or bolster or pillow up between our shoulder blades for restorative fish. <clears throat> so you need some kind of an item. It can even be a rolled up yoga mat or towel. It's gonna go right here. If you wear a sports bra, it's the bottom of the pot goes right where your bra strap is. If you don't, gotta kind of imagine. <laughs> so we're gonna come down and that block should feel really comfortable. It should not be cutting into your spine anywhere. It should feel just a perfect support. From there, we'll invite the head to come back, the arms to open. And if your back says yes, your legs can extend. This is supported fish. You can rest your eyes softly or even, or close them. Allow the breath to be more full, deep, complete. This is the pose of communication, of opening up the space between our heart and our mouth. 
so that the words we speak come from a place of love and kindness and compassion instead of just coming from our thoughts in our head. Deepen the breath. Feel your shoulders. When you're ready to release this pose, use your hands behind your head to help your head up. Allow yourself to curl up and then elbows can help you come off of your prop. Coming down onto our backs, one more pose before Shavasana, lying spinal twist. So let's bring the right knee into the chest, give it a good squeeze. This is that tourniquet action again, squeezing at the crease of the hip. And then shift to be, so that you'll be lying on your left side, pull the knee across, right arm extends, eyes turn to the right. And just close your eyes here or soften your gaze and just feel the shoulder opening. The shoulder is in abduction. Gravity is helping you with this stretch. Direct all of your breath into your right lung. release back to center pause before switching sides to notice right shoulder and left shoulder when you're ready extend the right leg hug the left knee in give it a squeeze at the hip that little tourniquet effect that's just cleaning cleansing rinsing inside of your hip We'll slowly cross the body, shifting onto the right side of the side of the right leg. Left arm extends, look left. Hmm. What last little bit are you ringing out? What is left to release? Slowly returning to center, finding a neutral spine. Let's extend our heels out toward the corners of our mat. Rotating the palms up, tucking the shoulder blades beneath us. Let's allow gravity to take over here as we descend into rest. Let's take another deep breath in with a long exhale. Bring your awareness again to your shoulders, these amazing body parts that allow us to reach, to hold, to lift, 
They give us the opportunity to do all the things we do with our hands. They are the hub of connection to our heart. Slowly bring your arms up around yourself and give yourself a hug. Give yourself a real heart hug, perhaps massaging your shoulders and just feeling this gentle caress of your own hands, your own arms. When you feel ready, release your hug, make your way to one side and eventually back to a seat. Let's do one more circle sweep again. Palms coming up toward the sky, hands together in front of our hearts. We'll lower the chin softly, looking over our fingers and just taking one more moment in gratitude for our bodies, and specifically these shoulders for the practice of yoga and all it can teach us. Namaste.